Hi folks, this is going to be one of the most fun videos. It's going to be on game development. I'm going to show you how to make an HTML5 snake game. We're in the channel directory. Let me create a snake folder. And this will have an index HTML. This is my basic file. Let's call it a snake game. And let's launch it in the browser. Alright, so we've got this here, and this is going to take um, maybe three different files of JavaScript. We will have these, and I will describe them as I develop them, but um, in short, this is going to have the game logic. This is going to have the graphics logic of rendering and displaying things, so this is going to handle user input. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we will create a canvas tag for drawing things. And this is where we're going to draw our things. And I will open the snake.js file and the render.js file. And then um, I'm going to also make it full screen and open the controller.js file as well. So let's first handle the basic, uh, well, controller logic. So, um, well, in the snake game, the controlling, the controller part is not too hard. What it does is it captures input from the keyboard. So the user can press. Uh, a key. Let's just use a simple logic for now. Um, and I want to detect if the user pressed some um, up button, down button, left button, or right button. So let me just log what this says. So let's open up the console and here we go. Uh, file found render.js. Let me just save these files. And uh, here we go. Okay, so left button 37, up, down, and right. So that's that. So it's 37, 37, 38, 40, and no, 40, 39. Okay, so this is uh, left, up, uh, this is down, and this is right. And let me just confirm left, up, down, right. Um, let me just comment this out for confirmation. Lift up, down, right. Left up, down, right. 37, 38, 40, 39. 37, 38, 40, and 39. Cool. Okay, this seems to work. And um, let's keep it in a dictionary. So let's call it keys. And this is where my keys are. Let me just uh, indent this and make these uh, strings. All right. And now we're doing some basic key detection. And uh, well, let's leave it to that for now. And let's let's go to the rendering function. In the rendering function, we need to draw some canvas stuff. So uh, let's grab the canvas tag from our document. So look at the element by the. I think I call it canvas. That's right. And uh, let's get this 2D drawing context as well. So get context 2D. Uh, and we're going to create a rendering function. Let's call it render and let's call here the render snake function to draw the snake. And I'm just creating abstract functions for now. I'll, I'll fill them up later. And originally, let's just initially let's, let's just uh, call the rendering function at the beginning. Uh, and um, yeah, um, how are we going to do that? Well, we need some game logic first before we are able to draw something. And let's keep a variable where we will store our snake. And um, let's also start with a few constants. The snake game logic is going to uh, live in this file, snake.js, and it's going to know exactly the data that is responsible for the gameplay. So things like where the snake is, the, the body of the snake, what it consists of, if we have won or lost, what is the direction that the snake is moving, and so on and so forth. So one of these parameters is the number of rows and columns in the playing field. So let's make it 50 by 50, and this is our snake, and we need a function to start playing. And um, in this function, let's just initialize the snake. We're going to um, push some things to it. So how is this variable going to work? Well. The snake variable is going to contain um, it's going to contain locations in the playing field. Um, this is a 50 by 50 playing field, and so this is going to have pairs of coordinates x and y. 
where the body of the snake lies. So if the snake, well, let's go to, let's go open up a, a drawing board. So let's go to the drawing board and think how this is going to look like. So if the snake has like little pieces that are one next to the other, they're going to look like that. And maybe it can also have taken a turn, so it's like this, and maybe even two turns like that. So you can see it has different portions of, of the body and they live in different locations. So what I'm thinking is we can just store the x and y values of the different portions of the snake. So if this is the head of the snake, this is going to be mm, this is going to be at the beginning of the array. So this is going to be the zeroth item. And let's say the snake is moving this way. So this is the head of the snake, and then this is going to be the last item in the in the um, array, maybe. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, so let's uh, make this the initial snakes uh, somehow uh, reasonable. So let's uh, have a snake length, which stores the snake length. Um, or actually, we don't need that because JavaScript is smart and we can just take the length of this snake. But we can have just maybe a constant to say snake initial length. Yeah, that's cool. Let's make it five. So the snake is going to be five blocks long at the beginning. And um, let's create it. So let's create all the blocks of the snake. So um, pushing to the snake and in this array I will store objects of x and y coordinates. And the well, the y. Let's make it just in the middle of the playing field. So this is rows by two. And let's just make sure this is a an int. And the x is going to be well, the beginning, uh, the the middle of the playing field as well. But let's have some offset y. So this basically says create five dots in the middle of the playing field that are placed one of the after the other horizontally. Okay, so we have our basic snake. So let's draw it. In order to render the snake, uh, we'll, we'll allow the rendering uh, logic to access the game logic, but not vice versa. So the render.js uh, file is going to know about the structures exposed by snake.js, but the snake.js fi uh, file is not going to know about the rendering functions. Uh, this architecture is okay. Um, this is not a big, complicated project, so I'm not splitting it up to proper libraries yet. But um, I'm just splitting up into, into a couple of different files just to have some basic separation of concerns and um, using this uh, this architecture you can later make it uh, into like a proper game if you want to make it bigger but uh, for now let's keep it like that so um, let's go through the snake so um, go through all the elements of the snake and we want to draw them so ctx dot fill rect is what we're going to call and also stroke rect so that's that and before we draw anything in the rendering function, I want to just make sure we clear the the um, drawing field clear or uh, yeah clear right. I think I can do that. Can I do that? Yeah. So this is going to be zero zero times wh. Let's let's keep some constants for the size of the drawing area. So I think I made it six hundred by six hundred. Let me just check that. Yeah, that's right. So it's going to be 600 by 600, so I'm going to clear the rendering area. That's because we don't want to draw over what we drew before because we're going to be calling the rendering function many times. Let's actually call it many times. So I'm going to set timeout render and call it after 17 milliseconds just to make sure the screen is, um, is uh, refreshed very often. Okay, so we're filling the regs. And in order to fill the reg, we have to grab the snake coordinates for this particular block of the snake. Um, so this is going to say, okay, snake i dot x, and y is going to be snake y dot snake i dot y. Let's make these variables. And uh, the problem is that these coordinates are in game space, so they're in the model space. They are in terms of rows and columns, so they're uh, from zero to forty-nine. However, our drawing field is in pixels, so it's it's 0 to 600 or 0 to 599 and so we need to convert from the model to the uh, to the view and so let's just do a transform x and a transform y to transform coordinates from the model of the game to the view and it's not going to be too difficult we're just going to multiply this coordinate by w and divide it by well x is calls right 
So we take the percentage of where it is in terms of the model space and we convert it to the view space. So this is just a simple linear transformation. And in the y transformation, I'm just going to do the same for y. And well, thing is that I want y to be in the mathematical sense. So I want it to be, I want the up direction to be positive and the down direction to be negative. But when we're talking about pixels, it's the other way around in the canvas. So I'm just going to also do an inversion here like that. Um, no. Uh, let's see. So if I take, yeah, so if I take this, seems to be right. Except uh, I need to. Hmm, yeah, so y over rows is a percentage of the rows. But uh, yeah, I think that's right. Okay, let's let's try it out and see if it looks right. So um, we get xx, which is the transform of x, and well, y, which is the transform of y. Let's see how it looks. So I'm gonna fill the rect, and uh, in order to fill the rect, I also need to keep somewhere. Let's keep them both. Let's keep them above everything. So I'm going to also calculate the the size of a single box. So let's call it box W. It's going to be W over the number of calls and box H, which is going to be H over the rows. And what this means is, um, well, the size of just one, one cell of the snake. So just the size in pixels. So this is what we're going to use in the fill rec function. And it's going to be XX and, um, well, box X yy box y and then the stroke is going to be exactly the same we're just putting a filling in it let's make it red and then we're going to put a, a line around the rect as well so uh, this is going to be stroke style and it's going to be black okay um, and I think we are doing everything except are we calling the init function no and so the snake starts, it calls the init function, it creates a snake, it inputs the it imports the rendering function, and the rendering function calls the render function, which keeps calling itself and should be drawing our snake. Let's see if this has uh, some appearance. Box X is not defined. Why is box X not defined? Oh, because it's W. Okay, let's call it W, that's right. So W here, W here, and H there, and H there see if this works and we do have some sort of snake however it doesn't look doesn't look quite right so let me just put a border around the canvas to see what the what the drawing area looks like so let's put a border around here make it black and um, let's also center the canvas while we're at it um, let's make it a display block and margin over okay we're there, and for some reason this doesn't seem to be doing the right thing. Somehow, one of the boxes is stretched. So let's look at the snake and see if it's right. So the snake has indeed five portions, and they seem to be correctly positioned. So all the Y's are the same as I asked, and all the X's are from 25 up to 21. And the head is here. So that seems right, and um, so the drawing is probably what's wrong. Let me see if it's due to repetition of drawing. So let me just render only once and see how it works. Uh, no, no, that's not a problem. So let me just print the different coordinates after the transformation. Maybe the transformation is wrong. So we're transforming, and it seems to be okay. It seems to be okay. It seems to be a few pixels wide. So maybe 12 pixels wide in each repetition. That seems okay. So maybe we've made a mistake here. Fill rect. Uh, I think uh, we need to do the other way around. So box W, box H like that. Box W and then box H. And I think that's going to be right. Okay, cool. That works. And we have a basic snake. Let's clear the debugging. And here we go. That's a snake. So let's make it um let's make it move. Um, so to make it move, it needs to have a speed. So let's call it speed, and the speed is going to have again two dimensions, an x and a y. Let's give it originally a speed towards the right, and then we need an integration function. An integration function is a 
typical thing in video games. And what it does is, well, it takes the world state and it, it advances it by one tick. So it takes it one tick further. In our case, it means moving the snake by its speed. So I take the snake. Well, let's see. Let's think about this. So I want to take the head of the snake. So the head of the snake is going to be that. Let's call it head. And the head needs to move in a particular direction. So let's um, keep the direction the head needs to move by in dx and dy, just for the difference in x and the difference in y. And we need to calculate a new head, a new head. So the let's call it new position is going to be an array or an object with x is going to be head to x plus dx and y is going to be head or y plus dy. And this is the new position of the snake. And this is going to be inserted at the front of the snake. So it's going to be the new head. I'm going to go to snake and then unshift this value of new position. So this inserts it at the beginning of the array. And then I'm going to remove the tail of the snake. So the last item is going to be removed. And this should make it move, provided I integrate uh, let's call it integrate, yeah. So provided I call integrate and I make integrate call itself. And then for um, integrate we need to also gain speed, which is the, the speed at which the game runs. Let's make it uh, 200 milliseconds. Uh, maybe that's a little too slow. Let's make it 100. And so I'm going to set timeout and call integrate by game speed. And let's see if it moves. That's moving. That's great. Well, it's moving past the border, but uh, we can fix that. For now, let's um, let's just make it just make it move up and down. So let's see what the user pressed as a key. Go back to the controller here and say, okay, if the user pressed something to the left or up or uh, down or right, and let's break in each case, and I'm going to be modifying the new dx and dy, so the new, the new speed. So initially let's make them 0 and then change them. If I'm going left, that means that dx is going to be minus 1. If I'm going up, we're working in the game model coordinates. So this is going to be plus 1 as in traditional math. And down is going to be minus 1 and right is going to be dx is equal to 1. Now let's just, um, let's just set the, the speed to be x dx and y dy. So this is a simplistic approach. We're going to fix it later, but this should do the basic of snake movement. So, oops, something went wrong there. Uh, apparently the speed of the snake is zero. Why is it zero? Um, hmm. Hmm, let's just console.log. Well, default, of course, should say return. And here I have changed position of snake. Let's try. Um, oops, this is not moving. Why? Ah, I need to convert my key code into keys. So let's take the keys of key code and see if this one works. Ah, cool. Okay, so I have a little snake that's moving around. Uh, and it's, well, it's doing something, but um, I don't have the main game logic yet there. So I can move over myself. I can change direction like that. That's not great. And I can go over the borders of the game. That's not ideal. So let's first fix. Um, let's first make it not go over the borders of the game. This is like a, a basic condition in the snake game. That means if I hit a wall I need to lose. So I need a function saying that I've lost. And um, let's keep a variable called playing. Initially it's true and if I lose I'm no longer going to be playing. So let's make it false in that case. And then I need to make some checks in my integration. And for these checks, I need to know if a position is within the game boundaries. So let's call it in board, in board, x, y, to check if the coordinate x, y is within the game board. That means that x has to be positive or 0, y has also to be non negative, and then x also has to be less than, well, the rows because we're in the game logic, and, or the columns, sorry. And then the y has to be less than the rows. And I think that defines the board. Yep. Now, if the new position here is not within the board, well, let's just maybe pass like a position here. That would be nice. It's just like a vector. 
Um, okay, so if if it's not in board, then well, you lose because he went out. Lose and return because you're not you're not going to be playing anymore. And this case of motion is only going to happen if I'm playing. If I'm playing, then I'm doing that. And in order to see that, in order to visualize that, we have to make the rendering function also aware of of the losing condition. So if I'm playing, then the snake is going to be blue, let's say. And if I'm not playing, then the snake is going to be red because I lost, and it needs to show me like this warning red color. Yes. Yeah, let's see if this works. Okay, it's a blue snake, it's moving to the wall, and boom. Cool, let's go down and see if that works. And, oops, it moved one square past the border. That's not great, maybe the transformation was wrong. Uh-huh, why is this transformation wrong? Well, that means I can go up to, and including zero, if this is a zero, and this is a one times h and it reaches h, that's not great. So maybe I need to just do a minus one over here as well. So let's try if this is right. This is more like a trial and error. Well, actually it needs to be a plus one. Okay, so let's see. And it's spot on. And let's see if the upper part works as well. It works, okay. And then um, we have this as well. Okay, that seems to be working. Um, so, what's next? Well, the next is next thing to do is to make the snake eat fruit, of course. Um, so let's create a fruit variable, and uh, let's make a function that positions a fruit in the board for the snake to eat. So the fruit is going to be a well, it's going to be a random object with an X position and a Y position, and that's going to be just a random position, both of them. And it's going to be from zero and up to, well, the calls for X. Of course, we need to floor this so that it's not, it's an integer. And similarly over here, talking about the rows, and well, the problem is that, well, this fruit that we're creating here is possibly going to appear on the snake, and that's not great, so let's make sure that it's um, not on the snake, so so on snake fruit. So while while it's on the snake, then we need to keep going. And of course, in addition to inboard, I need to also have the on snake position check. And this function checks if a position is on the snake, which we don't want the fruit to be. And well, just go through the snake and see if it's uh, occupying one of these positions. Uh, if one of these snakes positions is occupying the position, so snake dot length, and we go through this array, and if the position dot x is equal to the snake i dot x, and uh, the position dot y is equal to the snake i dot y, then that means uh, that it's occupying a position. And in the other case, then it's false, so none of the snakes blocks is occupying the fruit. And I think that creates a fruit. So when the game starts, we need to create a new fruit. And let's also make it draw the fruit. So in addition to render snake, I need to have a function render fruit. And the fruit rendering is going to say, okay, fill rect, add um, xxyy similarly as before, and also a stroke rect, stroke rect of xxyy box x, or box w. Fruit is going to occupy just one box, and of course I need to transform my x using transform x of the fruit x, and y y using the transform y function of fruit y. Yeah, and well, let's make the fruit green. That's nice. Fill style is going to be green to tell it apart from the snake that can be blue or red, and the stroke can be black again. So I think this will show some fruit. No, no, it doesn't show any fruit. Is there a mistake? I don't think so. Well, well, let's see what's going on. Oh, I'm not calling the render fruit function. Okay, render fruit. Let's see now. Okay, there's your fruit. And you can, well, go on it, but I'm not eating it yet. But, um, 
Well, maybe I should. Maybe I should be eating it. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, let's let's try and eat it. So this is going to be again in the game logic. If I'm integrating and I'm moving into a new position that is within the board, and I'm playing, then well, if the new position dot x is equal to the fruit dot x, and the new position y is equal to the fruit dot y, that means the head of the snake has moved on to the fruit, meaning that I've eaten the fruit. So well, uh, I need a new fruit first of all. And the second thing I need to do is I need to grow, right? So how does the snake grow? Well, it always removes a new position from the snake, but it may keep its tail on. So if I haven't eaten a fruit, then I'm removing my, well, then I'm removing my tail and adding a head. But if I'm eating a fruit, then I'm keeping, uh, I'm keeping the tail for one tick. So the snake is going to become one block larger. Let's see if this works. Um, moving here. Yeah, I think it's it's growing. That's cool, huh? Let's, let's see if I can make it slightly bigger. Yeah. So it's becoming bigger. That's nice. Okay, uh, well, this is not a video about gaming, though, so let's go back to, to coding. Um, okay, what's left? Well, um, there's another losing condition that we haven't handled, and that is if the snake intersects with itself. So there's two cases where I can lose, and that's if I'm not in the board, or if the new position is uh, on snake. Did I call it on snake? If it's on the snake, that's right. So let's see if that happens, but in order to make this easier to debug, let's just make the snake initial length 15 to, to play a little easier. Boom, okay, so if I so if I self-intersect, that's, that's going to be a problem. Uh, and that seems to be working in all directions. Yeah. Now, um, the other problem with this is this snake can change direction. So if I go up now, it self-intersects there, and that's kind of stupid. I should make it so that if you change direction and you're going, you're going up and you try to go down, you should not be able to do that, right? So in order to do that, let's, um, let's, make, the, let's make the simple like messaging thing, four months messaging thing between the controller and the rendering logic. Let's call this, let's just keep it in a variable. Uh, this is not too sophisticated, so let's call it just uh, new speed. The new speed is the speed that the controller desires for the game model to to assume for the snake. So the new speed is going to just be well false if there is no such desire, and um, the controller is going to set the new speed instead of setting the speed. And thing is, well, let's remove this debugging log. Um, thing is, if the if the dx times uh, speed dot x is not a zero, or the dy times speed of y is not a zero, then that means that um, that we have a problem. Why do we have a problem? Well, well, if this is not a zero, then this means that the new dx has a value, right? I, I want to go to a specific direction in the x-axis. But the snake is also moving in the x-axis, so this is going to be non-zero, and that's a problem. And here the same for the y-axis. We cannot change the speed if I'm going to change it over the same axis. So it's going to be a return, and then I'm setting the new speed here. And the problem is, well, the reason I'm using the new speed variable here is that if I had set the speed variable directly, then that would have caused a problem because this this would set the speed, and then this could compare the speed in the same, in the same like, uh, like tenth of a second. The player could go like left up, down, right, and then the speed would change in a way that was not legal without the snake assuming the new speed throughout. So, I think using the new speed variable should do it. Um, that means that during integration, I need, of course, to incorporate the new, the new thing. And, um, well, the losing condition, of course, can be put here to check. And um, what I want to do is, well, before I calculate the new position, I need to calculate, well, before I calculate dx and dy, I need to assume the new speed. So speed is new speed. So I just take the message from the controller and I, well, I adopt it as the actual speed. If there is a message, of course, if there is a message, if this is not false, then that means that the controller has sent a message to the model. And the new speed is going to 
take the full toggle after that, after we take the speed and put it in. So let's see if this works. If I go here and go left, right, okay, that doesn't do anything that's good. But I can still do these nice things. Okay. So it seems to work. I think I think that's a like this has the basic game logic for the snake. I think that does it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit while uh, Yeah, I think I think this works. Okay, cool, you you've got yourself a pretty simple snake game you can uh, you can play snake and of course we can improve this game in many ways we can add little images we can add sounds but the basic game logic is there so uh, yeah that's it thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have questions or suggestions leave a comment in the section below till next time so long